What's going on everybody? Welcome to Beyond the Screen. It's your girl Jasmine. In this video, I'm going to be talking to you guys about the challenge War of the Worlds episode number four. Oh, <laughs> change of scenery. Sorry. I'm supposed to be packing and getting ready for this road trip to Denver that I'm going on for Lorraine's dance competition this weekend. And I've done nothing. Gotta go with my sister to do some stuff. So it was a lot easier to just record from my bedroom instead of driving all the way to my office studio and doing it there. So forgive, I don't know, the situation, but video had to be done. Now, before we jump into this episode, we're gonna skirt, backtrack just a little bit and talk about the Zack and Bananas issue with the lobbing of the ball and the muddy challenge. Uh, in further analysis and discussion with you guys in the comments section, I did a little bit of research and it looks like speculation is actually that Zach was being a dirtbag and was kind of playing both sides and actually indeed working with Wes. Now what trips me out about this amongst the tabloids is that they're saying that the rest of the cast is pretty much like, yeah, there was more to it than that. Stuff went down. Well, we'll never know. It'll always be he said, she said. Probably won't figure it out until the actual reunion. What kind of sold me on it was getting to see it from a different camera angle. Bananas tweeted and was like, eh, if this doesn't look intentional to you, you're either dumb, delusional, or in denial. And to me, <laughs> it looks like Wes hit him with a, I'm open. And Zach looked and was like, ah, and like tossed it. When we watched it on TV, we see Zach toss it. But me personally, I missed Wes over there with his hand up. So looking at it from that perspective, it really actually doesn't seem that far-fetched to me that there could have been something in place just to get bananas out, which is weird to me because I feel like Zach has gone like to extremes to prove his loyalty and be, you know, frustrating for Amanda at the same time, which we got to see across the Vendetta seasons, but I don't know. I don't know, it's weird. We'll find out on the reunion, but I'm actually not 100% sold on Zach's innocence anymore, so. I needed to make sure we clarified that. The actual challenge this week was actually pretty sick because they're like in the air on this platform over, you know, death. And it's like this stick, like a small, kind of like a small stick, and then a disc, and then a big stick, and then like a gladiator thing with ropes on it, right? So there's that, and then there's like a platform over here. So one teammate is standing on top of the disc, and their job is to like use their body motion to swing the gladiator stick. Now your partner is over here waiting for you on this platform, and you're swinging the gladiator stick. So your objective is to jump onto it, hold on, jump off, smack this thing, and then you fall, and you're good. You make it. A lot of these folks didn't make it. It's a hot mess. While it was an enjoyable challenge to watch, I don't think I could have did it. I would have, ooh, man. I just, I don't know. That initial jump to grab onto the thing looked like a doozy. Because if you didn't time it perfect, you could go from like jumping on it and straddling it and then jumping off to like jumping too soon like people did. <laughs> like Gus. And then, that's how you fall. And then that sucks. Gus smacked his whole face and his tooth came through his lip and he was bleeding and he got off the thing. He was like, I hurt my lip. I need a medic. And it was horrible. Like, oh my gosh, who wants that? Overall winners for that, getting the rights of the tribunal, were Ninja Natalie and Polly, Turbo and Nani, and Hunter in Georgia which made for interesting interviews amongst the people they put up for elimination. Hunter wanted Amanda and Josh out. Polly obviously wants Kyle out. And Turbo and Nani decide that they're gonna pick CT and Julia. I'm talking, can you shut up? Reflective. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Like My sister collects phone cases. Look. 
is legit. One comes in the mail like every day. Sorry about that. This interesting pickings <laughs> is what led to the big disastrous fight that we were all looking forward to. Because in the midst of having a costume party, Kyle decides that he's going to threaten Georgia and tell her that if she doesn't vote the way he wants her to vote, he'll come after her on the next challenge. Now, first of all, I think it's a pretty cocky thing to just assume that you're going to be on the next challenge. Second of all, you realize that you're talking to a female? There's a whole bunch of other people that you could talk to about that. If you were really feeling gully, why didn't you go talk to one of them? Why are you talking to Georgia instead of talking to Hunter? 2A. I understand that you guys are like, oh, well, it's just the UK thing or whatever, so that's why he's talking to Georgia. Whatever, fine. I get all that. But as gully as Kyle tries to act, suck it up and talk to them as a team. Maybe to have both of them or whatever, but just to go directly to the girl and be like, if you don't vote the way I want you to vote, I'm coming after you next season. That's not a threat, though. Chill out. No, that's not how that works. So... I just, ah, I didn't like it. Polly, <laughs> Polly decides that he's gonna come over there. Oh, cause I forgot to, they already during the tribunal had like an issue. Polly's told, what did he tell Kyle? To, oh, that the only thing strong about his team is Maddie. And Kyle had the audacity to be like, well, yeah, won't you come down here and say that to my face? He did, he, he did, he did say it to your face. Just, just now. But in true extra poly fashion, he jumps down, bet, I'm gonna come and I'm gonna say it to your face then, what? And then they like do this headbutt thing that guys do. I don't know, I guess that's how like, as in like a new fighting style, it's like we're just gonna just run our heads into each other. I don't know, I don't know what that is. We I mean, fight like that in my day. I don't know, I, mm, it's weird. So they do that and get broken up and then, yeah, cut to this costume party. So Polly's like, in his like confessional, you know, narrative voice, he's like, you know, Kara likes it when I get in, you know, people's face and blah, blah, blah. So he goes outside, he's like, huh, don't worry about it, Georgia. No, what does he tell her? I don't even know. Whatever he said, I don't know exactly. Don't, what he say? He said something like, you know, don't worry about it. Georgia is not even gonna matter, no way. I don't know. Whatever stupid thing, you know, they rise the music up and then here comes Kyle again with his forehead, you know, and they're pumping into each other and Kyle has on a skirt and his shirt is tied and he's got pigtails in his hair, like high pigtails and he's like, trying to be threatening and like fight. And then he calls Kara a slut. Kara freaks out that he calls her a slut. Now, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pause there. <laughs> In seeing the clip for the fight on the challenge MTV's Instagram, I found myself reading the comments. I was interested to see what people have to say. You know, people like to hate on Kara a lot. Um, there's the people that respect her for the vet that she is and the people that just hate on her for no reason. And, I, forgive me, I, I'm, I'm gonna apologize in advance for anybody that's offended. If you're offended by me asking this question, you have no business being on my channel or my family's channels at all. I don't ever claim to be all seeing, all knowing, all understanding. So there's always gonna be a time where I'm gonna ask questions about something that I don't understand. So with that being said, when did the word slut become like, taboo people were outraged that kyle called Cara maria a slut like people were like i don't even like her but where does he get off calling her a slut that is never okay like i mean it was rude and not accurate whatsoever but <laughs> why is that like such a big deal like you would have thought it was a racial slur the way people were talking about it so i was like I get it, like Amber Rose like has her slut walk and you know, you, you shouldn't slut shame and things like that, but I, I just, <laughs> I'm sorry. I thought it was kind of childish, like all the things you just called her a slut, like 
okay. I don't know. I think the complete opposite of the words probably word I wouldn't be offended by at all. And I mean, not even just because I'm not <laughs> that, but I just, I don't know. I just, I, I don't understand. So if you can help me understand why when that became like just such a big no-no, please inform me. But, oh, and I keep forgetting stuff. There was so much like petty elementary school drama, I keep forgetting. Okay, so Zach was in the room popping off running his mouth to Kyle prior to this fight, which is kind of why Polly got set off and wanted to go mess with him. Um, so it's kind of important, I can't believe I forgot. But Zach was in the room and he made a really rude comment in hyping up the, you know, petty drama that Kyle was spitting out, trying to say that Kara's still in love with him. I don't remember Kara ever saying she was in love with him. Just a lot more fun than that. I don't think their relationship was that, that serious. I think she got treated bad and she was attracted to him physically, obviously and whatnot, but to say like, oh, she's in love, like they had some long, deep, intimate relationship to me is inaccurate. So basically Zach is in there and he makes the comment how Polly only acts the way he acts because of Kara. And you know, Zach's like, oh, you know, yeah, he was with a, you know, good girl and he traded her off to be with Jack Sparrow and, it was just messed up. So Kara's hearing this whole conversation takes place, goes, talks to Polly about it. They go on about their evening until this altercation that we're in the middle of talking about. Now, the irony for me of Polly, or of Kyle acting tough, taking his pigtails down and then putting his hair up in a high ponytail so that he can further put his forehead <laughs> in Polly's face. Your shirt's still tight, fam. I can still see your belly button and your skirt is kind of ripping on the side like you look dumb. Like, what? what are you gonna do with your forehead and your pigtails, bruh? Like, I don't know. And then of course everybody gets even more buck when the security like is involved and hold me back. It was just ridiculous. Like. You're both stupid. Leroy being jealous of Cam and Theo flirting in the kitchen was kind of funny. My husband and I laughed and my husband even like had me clarify just to make sure he understood what just took place. But Cam and Theo are like flirting in the kitchen and Leroy's in there and in his commentary, he talks about how he thought that him and Cam were supposed to be friends. So how could she just be that disrespectful and like flirt in front of him? I said this about night one, like we we know how Cam feels though. We know how Leroy feels. She's, it's obvious she doesn't act. She doesn't lead him on in any type of way. So I feel bad, like he's got it bad and he's struggling, but it was like, because you guys are friends, she's not supposed to like live her life. Like, no, you have to get over it. And she gets to do her. It was double elimination week. <gasps> Amanda and Josh end up with two votes. Kyle and Maddie end up with two votes. And then of course, Nani votes for CT and Julia. And then Turbo is then forced to break the tie because if he votes with his partner, then we're back at the same place we were at last week. And so Turbo was like, okay, like, is this gonna be a situation? DJ's like, you're just gonna have to vote and find out. And then Turbo starts giving this speech, right? <laughs> TJ's like, all right, so who do you vote for? Turbo goes, well, when there's people that come and they exist to play a game with each other, to be next to each other and fight in a war. There must be some kind of peace. And all I want is for there to be peace. I don't want for there to be war. I just want peace. And I'm saying this for no apparent reason, because all you guys wanted me to do was give my vote so that we could watch this epic challenge. But instead, I'm going to stand here in my jacket and my accent and waste time and 
not make any amount of sense. And then everybody is left confused. What? Who do you vote for? Then he had the audacity to be like, <laughs> am I am I right, TJ? TJ's like, I don't know, bro. You're I you pick a team. Pick pick a team, man. Like TJ's even at a loss for words. Like he didn't even know what to say. So Turbo stops the tie after his long speech by voting for Kyle and Maddie. Okay, so Kyle and Maddie are thrown in. Kyle makes a declaration that he will never forget that Kara took him to a final in Vendettas and so he will not say Kara's name. And then in his little confessional thing, he's like, you know, because I still got feelings for her. Were you not just running your mouth about how she's the one who's still in love with you and that's the only reason that Polly is feeling how he's feeling. Get your life together, man. Get your life together. You sound dumb, okay? You sound dumb. So he decides that he's going to pick Natalie and JP. <laughs> and now because it's a double elimination, <laughs> okay, because it's a double elimination, JP and Natalie get to pick who they want. Who do they pick? CT and Julia. <gasps> the look on the people's faces. Y'all, it was so bad. CT like started turning red and smoke started coming out of his ears and the rest of the cast was just in shock. CT was like, I'm another man nice to this kid. Why would you do that? You're so stupid. The challenge is these rings. So, three dudes stand in a circle. Everybody is touching a ring. So that makes one ring, two ring, three ring? How many rings are there? Those two, these two. Oh yeah, these two, these one. Three rings, three rings. So you gotta end up with two of them and get away. So you start out and they're all holding it and then they're wrestling and getting all tangled up and it's crazy and savage, you know? And so the girls started and they're fighting with the rings and then it's like, ah! And Maddie like snatches them all away and dominates their round, so Maddie wins. So the guys start, they got their rings and they're going for it. It's obviously CT versus JP and Kyle because CT is a monster. So he's fighting and they're twisting their way around and whatnot. So CT's got to worry about both guys. They each only have to worry about CT. And Kyle snatches away and runs and clutches out the guys around, which makes Kyle and Maddie the winners, which is the upset of this scenario. And Kara is pissed. And, you know, obviously Polly's pissed. And CT and Julia are pissed because they have to go home. And Natalie and JP are mad because they have to go home. And yeah, it's terrible. It's a crazy episode. It's been a crazy season so far. None of us could have predicted that vets would be out so soon. I mean, it's crazy. Well, the Bananas actually ends that the first three weeks. Like, that's intense. I feel like this whole season is gonna be unpredictable and wild and I am so looking forward to it. Ugh. Oh, someone's gonna quit next week. Let me know who you guys think is gonna quit. Get in those comments, let's talk about it. I wanna know who you guys think is gonna quit. I wanna know how you felt about, you know, episode four in its entirety, really. How you felt about the fight, whose side you're on. Also, and let me know if you guys let those Team Polly's or Team Kyle's reign. Um, I don't really like Kyle. I'm probably Team Polly. Kyle gets on my nerves. I think they're both stupid. But if I had to pick one, I'd pick Polly because I like Kara. So, yeah. Let me know whose team you're on. Get in those comments. Let's talk about it. If you enjoyed this video, smack that like button. If you haven't already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. As always, I appreciate each and every one of you. Until next time, God first, God bless.